Hello, everyone. My gosh, I did not. I was making some bias tape and I was not paying attention to the time. So I apologize. But hello, we are here to make Percy. And I meant to, meant to find Percy again for a little inspiration. Where is he in this calendar? Nope, that's Hattie. How are you guys tonight? And is everybody ready for some sewing? We had basketball today after school. Basketball is wrapping up, which I can't say I'm too disappointed about. There is Percy. That is who we are making today. How is everyone? How is your the rest of your afternoon and your evening? Hello, Valeria. Hello, Patty. Wish I could have been able to be on the floss too today. Had to work. Oh, good. Hope to start sewing this weekend. Oh, good. We get to see Angela again <laughs> today. I don't know if that's a get or I suppose I could see Angela again today. Hello, Tammy. So glad Angela is doing this in the evenings. So we might um, we might rotate that a little bit to try to make it available to some people during the daytime and then some in the evenings. So we're going to have to see how that goes. But I'm glad to offer it in the evenings too because I know a lot of you work and you like to you'd like to sew along with us with whatever you are sewing, chicken or, chicken salad or otherwise. So I'm glad that we can do it in the evenings too, so that you guys can join in. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Tammy13. Hello, Sue. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Cheryl. Fighting your machine here. I think my machines hate me. Oh no, <laughs> that's not good. Just put the borders on my shine on. Ooh, I still need to do that one. I need to finish it. I have I have it. I just haven't finished it yet. Unexpectedly able to be here and just finish cutting my pieces. Yay, Jen. I hope you guys will post after tonight and let everybody see your progress. So if everybody, once we're done with this live, just post to Instagram and use the Happy Little Stitch Shop hashtag or post to our Happy Little Stitchers Facebook group so that everybody can see whatever it is you're working on. So yay, Jen. Hello, Nancy. Ooh, ooh, the um, grandma's luncheon table runner, Nancy. I would like to know how that goes because I would like to make that. Ooh, Kim is making the grandma's luncheon table runner too. Wow, it is moving right along. Martha, hello, sewing friends. Going to be fun. Thank you, Angela, for bringing us together. I am so glad you guys are here. Hello, Susan. Pressing and cutting my fabrics for the Lori Holt Stitch Table Runner. Oh, that's a pretty one, too. That's right, spools and bobbins. Hello, Sherry. You're making two at once. One for me and one for my daughter. I love it. Hello, ND Quilter. You're back. Country Gal 854. Marsha. <laughs> Look at that. My daughter's here with me. <laughs> Marsha gave us a super chat. Thank you so, so much, Marsha. That's really sweet of you. Yay. She says, thank you. And is it, it's like a little, what is it? Is it a dog? It looks like a dog or a fox. I'm not quite sure. Hello, Kim. Going to stitch while you sew. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Cassie. Hello, Brandy. I love to see you again. I think alternating is great. It has to be easier on you to not have to do this every Monday night. True. Alternating might be a good middle ground. I agree. Debbie says, I'm skipping the chickens, but going to do the remix blocks while finishing up some other projects. Love seeing the chickens, though. Hello, Dawn. I'm home and get to join in. I love it. Tammy13 says, I was able. Tammy13 is Tammy S. For those of you who didn't catch the floss tube today, we have two Tammy S's in our community now. So Tammy, the original, the OG Tammy S, changed hers to Tammy 13. So in case you're wondering, that is Tammy, previous Tammy S. 
And now we have a new Tammy S, which I'm super excited about. Who knew? I was able to cut all my pieces for Percy and sew all my applique on. I'm turning my pieces now. That's what I'm going to be working on. So I did, I, I did all my pieces. Where's that? So simple shape. Oh no. So I did all my pieces and uh, I'm going to cut and turn them now. Um, hello, Carrie. Hello, Stephanie. Oh, I'm glad that Tammy got you here. I'm so glad you're both here. Can you tell me again where the So Simple Shapes Remix Club is found, Debbie? I couldn't find it. Yes. So if you search, if you send me an email, I can also send you the link. But if you go to happylittlestitchshop.com, which is what I'm going to do right now, happylittlestitchshop.com, and in the search... I'm just going to try Remix because I'm pretty sure if you just type in Remix in the search, it's going to be the first one that pops up. So it looks like that. So Simple Shapes Remix. It looks like that. So if you do a search for Remix, it'll pop up. And like I said before, if you're already part of the Remix Club, you don't have to join again to do the mini series that will be part of the Remix Club. If you're not part of the Remix Club, now is the time to join because that Remix series is going to be so fun. I cannot wait. So let me know if you find it, Debbie, or if you have problems. Cross-stitching Lottie does something wicked. Oh my gosh, I can't see Brandy. Julie says, hi, made it live. I love this in the evenings. Oh, good, Julie. Let's see. Kim says, I got most of my runner done and now I'm going to stitch. While you all sew, that's exciting. You're welcome, Debbie. Okay, so my daughter's here to read. I'm gonna, I just made my bias for the feet and the beaks. I'm going to cut. I am really not happy. Where is that one? And the, four of these were reversed. And so the first time, that I cut the these shapes, I did not reverse M4. I didn't reverse M4, so I had to go and do another one and reverse it. All right, oh, I'm missing a so simple shape. That's gonna drive me crazy. So you know I'm gonna be searching for it. You are supposed to be watching that, not me looking for a shape. That's going to drive me crazy. I'm going to need to try to find it. Hmm. Maybe I, maybe I already put it away. If only I could be so lucky. Uh, Tammy says, hi, Diak. Belated birthday. Thank you. Yes, hello, Adelina. Do you see a shape in here anywhere? Sometimes they're hard to see. All right, I'm gonna have to search for that later. Okay, so I'm cutting. I have to get my mind straight. I'm trimming and I'm turning and I'm shaping. Tammy says, Angela, you almost slipped. Did I? Did I? Did I? Uh, yeah, you, I think you did. <laughs> oh, I did. <laughs> I'm getting too comfortable with you people. I told them today about the snow squat story. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That is funny. Tammy said, I heard what you said only because I know. Every once in a while, I have been known to <laughs> say something I did not mean to say. Carrie says, happy belated birthday, D. How was that chocolate cake? It was very good. Mom made it. 
So it was put together hastily. It was a busy day. Susan says your birthday cake looked delicious. I shared a picture with these guys because I told them about it and I told them that you guys normally request that. Not all of you, but some of you do. And uh, then they wanted to know what the cake was. And so I shared a picture. So what is everybody working on? Because I know I know some people are working on the table runner. Some people are working on chicken salad. Is uh, anybody working on anything else super exciting? Kim, we, W, your quilt that you shared, I'm not going to say what it is or what it's for, but that's gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. I can't imagine how much time you put into that. Did it take a long time? And it was gorgeous. Larry says, I didn't get the chance to watch Lori today. Um, Patty says, that is a cute story. Happy birthday, though belated. Today, my oldest granddaughter turned 17. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that hard to believe when that stuff happens? Oh, my goodness. Lori Holt says, hello, everyone. Happy belated birthday, Angela's cute daughter. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Lori. Uh, Brandy says, it looked fabulous. I was jealous for a bite. Oh, huh. <laughs> the cake. Yes. That cake takes a little while to, to make. We should have Lori have a birthday, too. Oh, and I got, you should. Oh, happy birthday, uh, belated <laughs> birthday, Lori. <laughs> I got a new point clover turner. So now I have one for <laughs> paper. I don't know what happened to that one, but I think I must have. Oh, son of a gun. I think I must have um, been too aggressive with my paper crafting because... Uh, it, something happened to it. Uh, Tracy says the little toes or whatever you call them are kicking my rear end. The little toes? The, the feet on the chicken? Are you with the bias tape? There, are you having trouble getting them to lay just right? They do take a little, a little finagling. Uh, Patty says working on fall on the farm. Oh, world. Lord, people, I am struggling <laughs> right now. What is happening? Lori, help! I gotta show this. Please continue. <laughs> um, creative... Country Girl says, I'm stitching on the Berry Keeper by Brenda Gervais. Oh, the Berry Keeper. Uh, Tina says, would have worked on chicken salad, but decided to finish up my Lori Holt spelling bee quilt, adding border right now. Uh, Valeria says, my granddaughter turned 18 too. College time. Oh, my goodness. Um, Patty says, hi, Lori. You gave Dee a good birthday present. Uh, Kim says, the heart quilt or the pink quilt? The pink quilt was done in 2020. My quilter did such a great job. The heart quilt is much brighter and prettier in person. It's being quilted. Well, both I thought were gorgeous, but that heart quilt, that was beautiful. Uh, Lori Holt says, I thought since I've already made Percy, I'm making granny squares while y'all sew. 
you are. I can't wait to start making some granny squares this summer. Well, maybe before. I might do some before. So far, Percy and I are not friends. We're not getting along so well. All right, I might need to deal with that later. Uh, Debbie says, hi, everyone. Just finished dinner and made it here. Hello, Debbie. Uh, Tracy says, the chicken feet. They're a little finicky. Who is that? Tracy who? Dumber. Tracy, yes. They are. They can be a little bit finicky. Who did I... Cassie. I think Cassie posted her Hattie in Happy Little, no, in our Stitching with Lori Club one, maybe. Her uh, feet were really cute. Uh, Sherry says the feet are hard. Lori Holtz always look perfect. Mine look like my chicken has arthritis. <laughs> it could be a thing. Arthritic ch chickens. <laughs> Maybe they're low in potassium and cramping. <laughs> um, Lori says, Angela, shorten your stitch when you re-sew see, to see if that will help. So I think it will. I, and I keep forgetting to do that. So that is something that I need to do. But with this one, I think we have bigger problems. <laughs> so I was not paying attention when I sewed it onto the fabric, the interfacing onto the fabric. And I knew when I finished sewing that it was really close to the edge. And I thought, eh, I think I can save it. It'll be fine. <laughs> but I totally forgot about it between the other day when I sewed it and today. And so then, you know, I just, now there's a big old hole. So I'm either going to make it a shorter, his, his head will be a little bit shorter. If I can live with that, maybe that won't be bad. Or I'll do another one. What goes on top? Oh. So his head won't be hidden. So if it were hidden, then I might do something. I mean, just not worry about it as much. But I kind of messed it up when I was sewing. I sewed, I didn't line the interfacing up very well with the fabric. And so then it wasn't centered well. What does she say? Just give them a smaller head size. It's okay. So that's okay. That's what I'll do. I will listen to Lori. I'll um, just sew it. Smaller stitch. I'll shorten my stitch. I always forget to do that. I need to come and have lessons on um, the featherweight because I would love to start sewing on that regularly. But I have not really had time to delve into it and figure out how to, you know, get comfortable using it. I probably just need to watch some videos. Uh, Mary Jo Shields says, working on my second whip go for February. Oh, nice. You're moving right along then. Um, Lori Holt says, don't fret about the chicken feet. They're just feet and none of them will be perfect or look the same. No worries. No worries. And I read um, Lori's post for today. And I really appreciated the reminder to not stress. And have fun with chicken salad. So this is our happy place. This is where we are supposed to like, you know, not stress. Life is stressful enough. Oh my gosh. There are too many stressors. You children. <laughs> um, so have fun with chicken salad. Have fun. Let's have this be a happy, happy house. <laughs> Oh, you guys, what is wrong? This doesn't ever happen. Except it happened last week. Besides last week and this week. Oh, I can't blame. Oh. 
I keep poking through all of them. I need to shorten my stitch. This one wasn't even close to the edge. My stitch length is at a two. What should it be at? What do you recommend, Lori? Uh, Timmy asked that and Lori said she couldn't really say. Oh. Just that everyone's machine is different. Yeah. So just go small until it works. Yeah. Because I think, is it true that on the featherweight, I don't know if this is true or not, but is there really like a designated stitch or you just kind of adjust the thing to make it bigger or shorter, but there aren't really um, amounts associated with it? Is that true? Tracy says I need help figuring out where we're placing the waddle on Percy. Hmm. This is the waddle, right? This is the head crest. Um, yeah, it looks like, I don't know. I kind of, to be honest with you. So number one, I look very closely at Lori's finished picture. So I take a picture, I zoom in to try to really gauge placement as best as possible. But perfect placement, I don't know that I would get too worried about having it be perfect. But I've been using this calendar actually to be like, okay, there's about this much, there's about that much on top and just kind of going from there. Okay, people, if I can turn one shape without poking a hole in it, tonight will be a win. It'll be a win for tonight. Oh, did I clip those? Oh my gosh, I'm so scattered today. Kim says the heart quilt took about 10 days, including two days laying on the bedroom floor to check the color placement, only place the cats wouldn't share their layout opinion. 10 days? That's it? Kim, you whipped that quilt together in 10 days with all those teeny tiny pieces. I mean, I didn't look at it super closely, but all of those colors, those were all little pieces that you pieced, right? 10 days. Oh my gosh. 10 days. Brandy says, my challenge will be when I actually sew my chickens to their background fabric. I still need to do the legs and beaks. Brandy, your chickens look amazing. This is Brandy's first time doing a quilt, doing a Lori Holt quilt, and doing applique. I love that she's jumping in with all feet, chicken feet included. And uh, your applique looked so, so good. It looked so good. So you should be really excited about that. About how well it is going for you. I don't think I can be much more gentle. Do you hear my little one? <laughs> Clearly she is not settling down for <laughs> bed. I don't even know what this shape is supposed to be at this point. It's supposed to be the head crest. Yeah, you. thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brandy says, I did struggle turning my smallest pieces. My fingers are too big. Did you poke holes in any of them? Is anybody else having a hole poking problem? Like I am. I mean, I'm being really gentle. Shorter stitch, people. Lesson learned. Maybe now I won't forget. Um, Gosh, it's like a zoo here. <laughs> ND quilter one says sewing on my featherweights. You are? How many featherweights do you have, ND quilter one? Uh, Jennifer says, well, I've already messed up, lol. I've been sewing a lot today. Kind of tired. Time to quit. Jen who? Gregory. Oh, Gregory. I don't know what is going on here. 
Then she says, I have hungry dogs. Going to take that as a sign and go. Bye, everyone. Goodbye, Jen. Thank you for coming. Oh, wow. I must be fair. Oh, there I am. Um, Tammy says, yes, me too, Angela, but I don't think I have my bobbin in right because it keeps eating my fabric. So I went to my regular machine. Oh. Well, that's too bad. But how are you liking your machine so far, Tammy? Uh, Debbie says, I did Hattie on my featherweight. Loved it. First time I've sewn on her in a long time. Hooked again. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to give it a try. Maybe I won't poke holes through my applique. Valeria says, take a deep breath. And Brandy says, calm down, muscles. Are you guys talking to me? I am like calm as a snow squat. <laughs> I don't know. That's a really calm thing. I don't know. Calm as a cucumber. Cool. Cool as a cucumber. <laughs> um, Charlotte says, I vowed to not start any new projects in 2022 until I finished some unfinished projects. Oh my gosh. Then chicken salad came along. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. I got five finished quilts done in 2022, though. I'm on a roll. You are on a... What? You have five finished quilts in 2022? We're only in February. Charlotte, are you serious? And that's a pretty big uh, vow to, to take. Um to not take on any new projects. I would have been super impressed if you were able to follow, follow through with that. I'm so scared. <laughs> Please. Darlene says, I have a featherweight as well, but haven't used much at all. I need to pull it out and get used to it and give it a fun name. Yeah, like I would love to be able to just have that be my regular, like get comfortable enough with it to have it be my regular sewing machine. Um, Tina says I use stitch length 1.5. Oh, okay. That's quite a bit less than what I'm using then. Uh, Martha says, Angela, I was afraid to sew on my featherweight, and I just jumped in. If I can do it, so can you. You will love sewing on it. I don't know, Martha. You're pretty amazing. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you can do it. So can I. But I would seriously like to. It's just, it's just finding the time right now. Time seems to be lacking to jump into that stuff. Sam says, hi, is that Turner giving you a hard time again? It's a new Turner, Sam. <laughs> it's a new one. I put the other one, I like chipped or something. I was pretty aggressive with my paper crafting. I don't know. The point feels super like it may be chipped. It feels much different. So now this is paper. See, paper. <laughs> and this one is for fabric. I'm having worse luck this week than I did last week. And I swear, you guys, I do applique and uh, the, it doesn't, it, it doesn't usually go like this. So, I don't know. Then she says, hold my hoops. I got you. I'm long arming and watching tonight. Hold my hoops. Huh? Hold my hoops. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Hold my hoops. 
Brandy says, my machine goes from 2.0 to 1.8, so I did the 1.8. Okay. Um, Marcia says, I have trouble with the glue. I taught first and second grade for over 30 years, and I still make a mess with glue. <laughs> glue everywhere. What, what do they always say in first and second grade? What do you tell the kids? A dot is a lot. Is that right? <laughs> and D is like, she remembers that. I always used too much glue. <laughs> so they were constantly repeating that to me. D, a dot is a lot. <laughs> I am scared to shape tonight. I feel like the shaping forces are not on my side. Um, Patty says, Lori, on your remix from Friday, some of your pieces look to be hand-stitched with floss. Will you be doing a tutorial on how to do that? She has done that. Um, and then Lori says, Angela, I really think that your stitch is too long. And like I said in my video Friday, if you are doing small pieces, maybe stitch around them twice for reinforcement. I didn't do that. So I will need to do that. I will shorten my stitch length. So helpful. You guys, who else gets Lori Holt to hang out with them while they're sewing and give tips? Like, that's pretty amazing. Oh, so, so Lori's telling me to go sew around <laughs> these again. I was like, oh my gosh, Lori Holt's here. La, la, la. So I'm going to go sew around these, but please continue. ND Quilter once says, Angela poking holes and turning my pieces too. She said what? Poking holes and turning my pieces She's too. She's doing two, so yeah. we both need to do a shorter stitch or a stitch around twice. So I'm gonna stitch around these again so that uh, maybe I can avoid the holes coming through. Stephanie says, I hope this isn't a dumb question. But I know you guys are all kind and won't judge. Oh, what does reversed mean? Mm. No question is dumb, Stephanie. So let me show you quick. So these, where did I put them? Oh, I, I put them away, except that one. Where did that one go? Okay. So I'll use this really, really big one. So here's the so simple shape, right? And so this is the Percy's chicken body. And when you look at the number, you can see that the number is right. It's the right way around versus when I flip it around. Well, that's right. That's wrong. <laughs> so the number is wrong. So this is reversed. But when I flip it around, you can read it the right way. It's reversed in, in this yes. for me. So that's why I was confused. So when you have it the right way so that you can actually read the letter and the number, then that's the right way. But if you reverse it, you flip it over so that it's opposite. So for example, our Percy is going to be facing this way to the left. See, again, I was confused because I read Lori's blog and she said, Percy's gonna be facing left. But I was looking at it this way, I was like, he's gonna be facing right. Oh my gosh. Maybe don't sew on Monday nights. I don't know. So Percy's going to be facing left. Yeah. But if you face him this way, you could also have another chicken that's facing right. So reversed is simply flipping the shape over to have it be reversed. Uh, Brandy says, yes, I think I did poke a couple holes that will get hidden in my sewing. Yes, I did. What did I do? I did a couple last week, too. Um, but those were more minimal and were able to be fixed with just a little bit of glue, like it wasn't a big deal. But these are like craters. They're like really large holes.
So you guys get to learn at my expense. <laughs> you get to learn from my mistakes. Uh, Charlotte says they were unfinished projects, some from 2019. Oh, and so you just finished them up. That's still a lot. I mean, that is a lot of progress to make. You should pat yourself on the back. It's always so fun to have a finished quilt. Doesn't it feel so good? And you've got five of them, did you say? Miss Patty Cat Lady says, gee whiz, I'm still working on Hattie. Well, that's part of the reason that we're doing this, um, these evenings together, is to try to stay motivated on making progress and not letting it slip away. And plus we get to hang out with each other and kind of sew together for a little bit of time. Set aside, you know, 30 to 30 minutes to an hour just to to make some progress and keep heading in the right direction. Uh, Kate Lewis says, this looks like complicated stuff. Hope you're all doing well at the Hooper household. Kate, hello. How are you, my niece? How are you? It's really not complicated. Um, but for some reason, it seems to be very complicated for me tonight. Okay, this one I went twice around. So let's hope it goes better. Uh, Brandy says, I'm jealous of all the featherweights. I want one really bad. So, so bad. That is how I felt too. Oh my gosh. I understand your, your longing for a featherweight. <sighs> uh, Tammy says, how cool is it to have Lori with us while we're sewing chicken salad? I know. Just wrap your minds around that for a second, shall we? Just wrap your minds around that, hanging out with our happy little Stitch Shop community while we are sewing her quilt or quilts. I mean, there are people out here who are putting together spools and bobbins. There are people out here who are putting together grandma's luncheon table runner. So um, there's lots of Lori sewing going on of all kinds. Um, Miss Patty Cat Lady says, I love the chicken names. So cute. They are so cute. We talked about that last week on Monday, all these vintage names and how uh, people really liked them. And some of the vintage names are making a comeback. Uh, Debbie says, I love the six inch remix blocks. Not sure if I will put in venter of star use another excuse me setting we'll be purchasing the so simple shapes to use in the coming year nice yeah that remix series is going to be pretty fun it's going to be pretty fun i'm excited about it which i've already exhausted my excitement upon you people i think because <laughs> i was very excited about it we talked about it a lot today during that feels a little bit better um uh, during the floss tube, but I'm so excited about it. So, but we'll talk about it more on Thursday during the quilting live stream. And hopefully I will have something to share with you by then. Valeria says, pretend you don't have another sewing machine and use your featherweight. Ooh, that's a good one. I should do that. And then Lori says, Angela, you don't need a lesson on how to sew on a featherweight. It's just a sewing machine and you plug it in and step on the pedal and it sews. <laughs> I feel like I need a lesson, Lori, in life, maybe in general. I don't know. 
I feel like I need a lesson. I, I probably just need to get it out and mess around with it, you know, play with it a little bit. And then, and then I think it'll, you know, you'll just become more comfortable with it. Um, Patty says, I don't have a featherweight yet, but I did find a very early 1920 machine at an antique shop for $25. I also have my mom's old machine from the seventies. Oh my gosh. Oh, that stuff is so cool. My mother-in-law has a, what's the, what's it called? The one that you had to do the foot. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I don't know what it's called. Is it a treadle? Treadle? What's it called, you guys? <laughs> what's really hard about these uh, Zooms is not having like, Instant communication <laughs> with people. Um, Creative Country Girl says, if you can sew on a modern machine, a featherweight is much easier. I don't have to use the oh. handbook at all when I first got to Thelma. They're very easy to use, Angela. Really? Well, that's good to know. I feel like... Okay, so this feels a lot better. I, I need to... I need to um, get, I'm still cautiously shaping. I need to get um, more comfortable here because it's actually not poking through. Um, Kathy says I'm doing back basting on my chickens. Back basting. What does that mean? Back basting. What does that mean? Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. What's that from? <laughs> I don't know. Greece. It's from Greece. Oh yeah. Um, Miss Patty Cat Lady says there are many YouTube videos on featherweights. I know. I know there are. And Kim was nice enough to send me this fabulous series, which I think is done by the featherweight shop. And I wa and they're short videos, so they're manageable. But I uh, watched the first one, and I, which I think was all about winding a bobbin, maybe. And uh, I have not had a chance to go back. Uh, Lori Holt says, that's exactly what I tell my applique students about glue. A dot is a lot. See? A dot is a lot. Okay. Okay. I might have a shape to iron. <laughs> I might. I must not have clipped that one very good. Maybe when I sewed it again. Patty says, when I start sewing my chickens, I will have Lori's tutorial up the whole time. My first applique as well. <gasps> Patty, it's your first one too? I'm not sure. You may have told me that. I don't remember. I get so excited when people are doing their first applique because it's pretty exciting. Okay, this one I might be able to iron. Sherry says, I was very hesitant about the glue. I, I used the Sue glue on Hattie last week and now I'm a complete believer. It was so nice to be doing my hand applique without jabbing pins into my palms. Yeah, this, the, I'm a fan of the glue too. The Sue glue is pretty, it's pretty good. Look, I have my first shape. It's 
It's not rounded all that great. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only shape for tonight. Oh my goodness. Uh, Kate says, I'm great, just busy with school stuff, lol. Had a little break in, thought I'd pop on and say hello. Yeah, are you? You're not almost done yet. But you got to be coming up on spring break, maybe. Right? I don't know. Marcella says, I was watching you on my TV and couldn't comment. Now you're on my phone. So glad I'm not the only one with wonky chicken feet. Yes, people have said that a lot on our uh, our um, Facebook groups that they have had some wonky feet. But like Lori said, no worries. Chicken feet will be weird. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't mind we're okay. I mean, they're not perfect, but I was okay with them. See, I have proof that I can actually shape some applique shapes. Hattie, Hattie is so cute. I didn't put the legs on yet. But I can actually do applique. It just does not seem to be agreeing with me tonight of all nights. But I think I'm going to go back and re-sew. Well, there's no thinking about it. I will be going back and re-sewing. What about that shape? Oh, oh I was going to re-sew that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine says, I'm way behind all of you. I'm still cutting my fabric. Well, there's no schedule. It's just about having fun, enjoying the process. You don't have to keep up. Uh, Lori Holt says, uh, that is exactly why I use Sue glue. No pin poking. <laughs> Uh, Creative Country Girl says, did you name your featherweight, Angela? So I have an idea of what I would like to name it. And it was based on suggestions from you guys, actually. But I did say that I would do a poll and get uh, people's suggestions uh, through social media. So I still plan to do that um, because I'd like to see what other people suggest but I do think that I a suggestion that was made by you guys really stuck with me and I, I really like it so I'm thinking that's the route that I'm going to go but I'm keeping an open mind until we do an official poll to see if any other names pop up that I really like Uh, Tammy says, Angela, are you doing the snippets and the curves? That could be a reason why you're poking through also. It could be because um, I was trying to do it a little bit closer than I typically do. So that could be. Although, I don't think on the, well, that the one on the head was just, I think that was just poor placement when I did it. And I sewed it. Uh, Nancy says, I have an old Bernina I bought new in 1970. It's a workhorse, and I still use it along with my newer Bernina. Oh, my gosh. Don't you love that? Those machines that just last forever. My mom, the machine that I grew up around was a um, Kenmore a Kenmore sewing machine, and uh, she still has it. That's still the one that she uses. I don't think she's ever, I mean, if anything went wrong with it, my dad would just, you know, fix it. She's never had any major issues with it.
Um, ND Quilter One says, "I'm a Bernina girl, but my featherweight will win every time. Once you start sewing on them, it's hard to go back." Love my 301 singer too. I just need to get her out and play around with her a little bit. Stephanie says, okay, I'm way behind, but I have my fabric for Hattie starched and I'm getting ready to cut. Yay! It doesn't matter if you are where you're at, as long as you're just doing it and having fun. Okay. May the force be with me. <laughs> Um, Brandy said, I got Pearl's pieces cut tonight. Need to trace them, sew, and turn. Brandy, oh my gosh, you're just zipping right along, but I totally get it because when you have the time, you want to take the time to do it because there will be a time when, you know, you just, you don't have the time. Um, Lisa says N equal to one. I love my 301A. I use it all the time. Um, Kathy says the only thing you need to draw the whole chicken on the back, then you hand applique it, it on. It didn't make sense to me at first, but I've been doing it for years. What? Only thing you need to draw the whole chicken. Oh. Oh. Okay. Keep going. Spring break is three weeks before graduation. Oh. Wow. Why did they have it that close to graduation? I cannot believe you are gonna be graduating. <laughs> Goodness. Rana says, good evening, everyone. I finally made it to a live. Hello. It's been a while. How's everybody been? Hello, Rana. Welcome. I am so glad you are here. We have school got canceled here for tomorrow. We have the storm coming in. So then maybe I will have time to redo some of my shapes. Um... Yeah, we have a storm coming in, so the kids are pretty excited that they have a snow day tomorrow. Um, Carol says, this is my first applique. I'm terrible at it. Oh, well, I just finished the six and a half inch vintage Christmas. That was fun, but a challenge for a beginner. You helped me get the confidence to cut the fabric. Oh, you are sweet. You are sweet. It was fun, but it was not a joke. Like those, that six inch vintage Christmas quilt is, that's no joke. I still haven't put my bows on. I'm still trying to psych myself up for that. And I know so many of you said, it's not hard. It's not hard, but my measurements were off just to do the small border around the outside. I had to like adjust my measurements in order to have the border work. <laughs> so then I thought, oh my gosh. I'm completely not in a good boat for adding those bows. So I will jump into that at some point, but I haven't taken the leap yet. But seriously, that uh, vintage Christmas, it was a ton of fun, super cute, but, and a great learning experience. Like I'm so glad that I did it and I love this quilt, but uh it, it was challenging and it was challenging for a lot of uh, quilters who are far more experienced than me, who has very little experience, but everybody has said that it was a lot of fun and that they're really glad that I did it, that they did it. So, so I'm happy about that. Uh, then Carol Brown says, I'm late joining. I, I just heard there are others struggling with the feet. Mine look like my chickens have the rickets, LOL. <laughs> So that's funny. Chickens with arthritis, chickens with rickets. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Uh, Lauren says, I still use my 12 
Stitch Kenmore. I got it back in the 80s as a graduation present from my parents, and I love it. It does what I need it to do. Yeah, my mom seems to be pretty happy with hers. Like, she, it does what she needs it to do. She sews, and she's, she's good with it. Uh, Lisa says, uh, Lori Holt, I'm wondering how much crocheting you're getting done during this time with all of us. Yeah, are you moving right along with your granny squares? You guys, stuff for the granny squared along is, I think I told you this already, starting to arrive. So once we get through invoicing and stuff like that, hopefully all the all of the things will be here. And then I can start putting together those starter kits and having those in the shop and people can start to get pumped up and ready for granny square along uh kim says table runner pieced we'll have to cut out the borders in the morning kim are you kidding me you got it all piece and i got one shape I got one shape done. Kim, you got a whole table runner piece. We may need to never do another chicken salad live. <laughs> um, Lisa says, Angela, I learned to sew on my mom's Kenmore machine. You did. When I was little, I always, always like, I would press the foot pedal. Um, and of course, it was usually unplugged, so it didn't work. But I could always turn the, the knob and make the needle go up and down. And I thought that was just the best. And then every once in a while, if it was left plugged in, I might actually press the foot pedal and have the machine go. <laughs> and then I would be like, oh. I just did it. I sewed. Um, ND Quilter 1 says, Angela, have you thought of... I thought about you worked all day. So how can you be at the top of your game tonight? If this was morning or early afternoon, it would all go much better, I'm sure. Well, that's nice of you. I hope. I hope that that is the case. I did get in here and get some stuff done yesterday. So I went, you know, I was still working on my happy place. And um, I was in a total rhythm with my happy place. And I think I told you guys that when we were moving the shop, my husband knocked over all my design boards that had all of the pieces cut out and labeled. And so now all of the shape, all of the cut pieces are just a jumble. So I need to go back through and figure out, you know, what is what and what goes with what. So I, it's kind of um, lost my motivation a little bit to, to get going with that. But over the weekend, I did applique my happy place pieces that you guys see in my closet <laughs> not a lot really i did applique on like I, i'd had them all done but i hadn't had any of them applique down so like i got this done and cut i got this one all applique i just don't have the buttons on got my scissors applique I got my sewing machine done, the applique pieces on there done. I started to do the embroidery on my tomato pin cushions and get the needles embroidered on. So I was in here getting a chunk of stuff done, which felt really, really good to be in here and just kind of making some progress on some stuff because that's been hard to come lately. Uh, Country Gal 854 says, my first machine was a used Kenmore when I was a teenager many years ago. That's what I was going for. I didn't read that one yet. Chicken feet are supposed to be great, great. It's all good. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. Cray cray is what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm happy just crocheting and pausing to answer your questions. Oh, good. Are you, do you enjoy it, Lori? I hope you're hanging out with us because you enjoy it. 
Percy is also down. Tracy, you are zooming. I had my shapes ready when we started, so I'm really not an overachiever. <laughs> you are doing so good. Everybody share your Percy's, please, because I would like to see them. Crazy chicken feet and all. Let's say to Angela, we love sewing with you. This is relaxing and fun for us. Oh, good. Good. Even with my mishaps. Oh my gosh, you guys know how that feels though. Like you're super excited to get together and sew with people. I don't have local stitching friends, so this is kind of enjoyable for me. And um, you're like, okay, I'm going to go get through Percy. I've got it all ready. I've got all the shapes done. And then you start doing it. You're like, what? What? And so you just start to become deflated and like um, lacking in confidence, you know? So, but I'm going to tackle this yet tonight and I'm going to get this fixed. So I'm going to keep the ball rolling, especially when you, there's so much stuff to do, like you don't have time for mishaps. And so then it just kind of weighs on you a little bit. So that's kind of how I feel, but I'm also um, very determined to make this all work and get it going, get it done. Oh, I can't see. Lauren says, making a granny square has been on my bucket list for a long time. I'm so looking forward to this granny square long. I'm getting a few skeins of yarn each month to get ready. I'm so excited, Lauren. Yes, we almost have all of the colors in the shop. Um, All of the colors of the skeins, except for the new ones, which are coming in June, but I'm going to have them all once they're released. But all of the other goodies are coming. And so we're going to be putting together that starter kit and it's going to be good. Thank goodness. I already know how to crochet. So at least the granny squares, squares will come easily and I should whip those out in no time. Oh no, where did it go? This right here. Oh, I need to learn crochet. Would like to do the granny squares. Lori has a video out there of how to do the granny squares. I finished piecing the table runner. It was my weekend project before I started another special quilt. Oh, yes, Carol. So Lori is doing a granny square along that starts in June. There are, um, I don't have the storyboard here, but there are new uh, chunky thread colors that are being released in June. And there are some other fun notions that are coming in June, like some charms that are coming and some panels to make like a crochet bag and to make a little uh, crochet needle bag. So there are tons of fun things coming in June. And so Lori's hosting a granny square along and our happy little stitch shop community is jumping right on board with that. And so we're providing, I started to get all of the skeins of the different chunky thread colors in the shop. We've actually had them in the shop for a few months now. And people are purchasing those as they place orders. They just purchase a few skeins here and there to build up their collection. We're also going to be offering at Happy Little Stitch Shop um, a starter kit so that you can get your crochet needles and your blocking board and your rust pins and your um, all the stuff that you need uh, is going to be in a starter kit. So we're, I'm working on putting that together and hope to have it together and put online early next month. And then once all the colors are released, we're going to have a, somebody actually requested this and I thought it was a really good idea. We're going to offer, she said she wanted all of the colors and to be able to pull from. And so we're going to offer a bundle with all of the colors of chunky thread at a discounted price. So gather all of your crochet products and then be ready to do the granny square long with uh, Lori in June starts this June. Oh, and she's saying stuff about it. Let me read. For those of you preparing for the granny square long, I did my video early on how to make them so that you could be making them ahead of time if you wanted to. They're so fun and addicting. So she does have a video on her YouTube channel. If you just search on YouTube for Lori Holt granny square long, I bet it, or granny squares, I bet it will pop up for you. Brandy says, chicken feet are gnarly. <laughs> that is not the pretty part of the bird. It's so true. So I think it, it all sounds authentic. So that's very true. Where can I find that big box you just took out of the closet? At happylittlestitchshop.com. <laughs> of course, I have a few of them. Where's my other one? 
Oh wait, can you grab those over there without knocking anything over? Sure. So th these are Lori's um, project tins and they're fabulous. See, I have my 12 inch vintage Christmas blocks in this one, but it, and it comes as a set. So you get a big one and a small one in a set. Okay, so this is the My Happy Place set. They're in the shop. I just ordered a bunch more because we're almost sold out. But this is the My Happy Place Be Organized Project Tin set. And then Lori just released the Baked with Love storage tin set, which looks like this. So you get the big one and then you get the small one inside. They're fabulous. I love these storage tins. Um, perfect for storing stuff in your quilt space. That one, Lori was saying, could be perfect for kitchen storage and all that kind of stuff. They're really, they're really awesome. I like them. Should I put this back on? Yes, please. Martha says, Angela, did you machine or hand applique? Those are my happy place blocks. They look great. Um, I machine applique them. I have switched over to machine applique just for the sake of time for me these days. I love hand applique, uh, but it does take a little bit longer and for me. And uh, I am lacking in time these days. So I am machine applique these days. My first Lori Holt book is coming tomorrow. Yay, Susan. You're going to get so many ideas from that book. You're going to love it. And you're going to have fabulous options for your chicken salad quilt. What did Tammy ask, Lori? She was like enjoying it. Oh, I'm happy to join when I can. Oh, good. What batting do you use for your quilts and bags? Hope you enjoy it. Yes, I'm so excited for you, Susan. You just wait till you see it and you start thumbing through it. You're going to be inspired. You're going to love it. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, I want to make this. It's going to be a book that you're going to go back to again and again. That is so relaxing to be visiting and chatting with you all. And bonus, I'm in my jammies. <laughs> Mary Jo, great to know you have them. We'll order. Awesome. I think you'll love them. They're really great containers. I use them for my blocks, but I've also, um, you can use them for any type of sewing, sewing storage, storage or any type of storage in general. Mariel can do no wrong. I love the project tins too, says Lisa. Having a great time tonight. Oh, good. So for batting. Okay. I think, this, was it, Rana, was it you that emailed me and asked me that? I was like, I don't know what Lori uses off the top of my head. So perfect that she's answering. She said, I usually use an 80-20 blend, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. I do like to use 100% cotton and wool too because they are natural fibers, which I love. Awesome. What size is your design board you suggest for these chicken blocks? I don't have one yet. So I'm using the 14 inch one um, for this step, partially because this is my favorite cookbook print. And so I was pretty excited that there was a design board with it on. Uh, but for this step, for the, for the arranging the applique part, I'm using a 14 inch. Um, so I think you could get by with a 14 inch. The next size would be the 18 inch, which is, <laughs> uh, this is my happy place <laughs> after my husband knocks it over. So there's that, but this is the 18 inch size. And, uh, then, so with the 14 inch, which I'm happy to use the 14 inch, having it be about the same size as the, as the background block doesn't bother me. But if, you, if that bothers you, then the 18 inch would, you know, be, give you 
a more design board room. That's what the block would look like on there. You'd have a, a bigger border around the outside. But does that answer your question? Does that help, Brandy? I'm using 14 inch. And we have, so this, new, we have the new cookbook 14 inches in stock. They arrived last week. 18 inches aren't here yet, but they'll be coming. We have 10 inch cookbook design boards and the bitty boards for cookbook in. It is hard to have a favorite cookbook print. That one really stuck out to me for some reason. I don't know why, but they're all kind of fabulous. Like even as I was cutting the borders tonight for, for Percy, I thought, oh my gosh, these are all really cute prints. Like, I love that. I love all of them. What was this last one? Oh yeah, with the windows. That's a fabulous one too. They're all really, really good. You can't pick just one. Yeah, so Lori says use either a 14 inch or an 18 inch. Angela, I have some advice when cutting and stacking design boards. If you want to hear it, of course, I will always take advice from anybody. And especially from Lori Holt. Yes, please tell me. You have it in a little cubby, which is so nice. It's kind of out of the way. I just need um, more space. I don't know. Although your space isn't isn't super large. You said before that your sewing room is, is on the smaller side, Lori. And you just really utilize the space the best you can. Lisa likes that one a lot too. Martha says, Percy and Hattie are sewn and cut now to flip on the right side. This is very motivating. Those tins are wonderfully big for storing and protecting my blocks. They're pretty awesome. I saw that 14 inch cookbook board and it's blue. It is blue. Your color. It's that denim color, you know, which, uh, I'm a fan of, I like it. She flips one on top with a rubber band. Oh. Oh. Do you see what she's saying? Yes, I was, I was very confused for a second. Um. So then you just put an extra design board on top and put a big rubber band around it. What? Am I understanding that correctly? Oh my goodness. We've been on here for an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to have to chat with Lori about her design board storage to prevent my, uh, issues with my husband being in my sewing room design board sandwich jammy a sandwich a design board sandwich that's a good idea okay here's what Lori says when I cut individual blocks for an ongoing project after cutting I stack them up and here is the advice part pay attention people Put a lid on them and add a rubber band or a ribbon around it. That's a good idea. I wish I would have known that a few months ago. <laughs> just kidding, Lori. I'm just kidding. That's a good idea. I don't know that I have enough design boards to do that, but and I just need to keep collecting them. I have both Hattie and Percy done except for the buttons. I've never been this cut out before. See, isn't it, doesn't it feel good? Isn't it exciting? That's what, um, that's what I think is so motivating about doing these evenings. Now, clearly I did not get much done today, but I'm glad that you guys did. And uh, I think it's really motivating to stay on track when we set aside time to do it together. I think it, uh, it's motivation and it kind of holds you accountable to, to doing it at a certain time. Lori says, I put the batting side down of another pro of another design board for a lid. So all of my design boards are in use. 
but I get what you mean. You just put the other one right on top. So it's like the bottom here and the bottom is here to keep everything in place. I need to do that. Okay, so what have we learned? Shorter stitch length. Sandwiching design boards to keep things in place. So twice around your shapes. Shorter stitch length or so twice around your, your stitch, your shapes. What else have we learned? I don't know. Is that it? Last time you learned to pay attention to whether or not to reverse your shapes or not. Yes. See, join me every week for a new lesson to be learned. So Lori says, I do it all the time. You can put them in a bag sideways, turn them upside down and nothing can ruin them. I wouldn't count my husband out of that equation. <laughs> Lori is clearly the best. She is. I take them camping. Oh, that's a good idea. Lori, I had a really weird dream the other night that we drove our pop-up camper and we went camping with you. My daughter is almost on the floor laughing. I'm not kidding. I don't know why I had that dream, but I did. We take them camping that way to retreats and so day that way every time. That's such a good idea. Check, check. I always learn so much every time. <laughs> what I would like, Marcella, is to, instead of you be lear learning um, from my mistakes, I would like to maybe, you know, have you learn from not my mistakes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, so many good things learned tonight. Okay, so we said we were going to keep it to an hour, and it's an hour and almost, well, 17 minutes. So I'm going to get ready to sign off with you wonderful people. I hope you keep having a little bit of sewing time tonight. And I hope that you have had fun making Percy or doing whatever sewing project you are doing or crocheting or stitching. Lori, thank you so much for joining us. It was very, very cool of you to be here with us tonight. I really appreciate that because I know you got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I appreciate you taking time and hanging out with us. That means a lot. So thank you very, very much. And thank the rest of you for taking time out of your evening as well to hang out with us. I really appreciate that too. And I appreciate your continued support of us and of Happy Little Stitch Shop and mistakes and all. I appreciate your support. So thank you so, so much. And um, I hope you all had fun and I hope you were able to get some good crafting in. Have a great night, everybody. I will see you on Thursday in just a few days. And uh, be safe out there with the weather. I know we're getting some weather here. I don't know if you guys are, but be safe out there. Have a good evening. Happy stitching, everyone. Take care.